good morning my dear students welcoming you all to the day. okay myself to you i am dr madiha sr in the department of pharmacology today we will be discussing about different routes of administration okay before going into our topic just let me explain what we usually do with online classes usually after one class we give a quiz are uh, containing 10 questions or 10 to 15 questions and you are asked to do them in the allotted time which will be considered as your attendance those who do after the time will be considered as time out or late comers so i hope you all will do the quiz within time and you get your attendance for that class okay okay now look into this picture what do you see in this picture one person having a drug through his mouth another one injecting the drug another one placing the drug under his tongue another person injecting something into his hand then coming to the drug where it is being placed in the rectum another one inhaling the drug and finally we see a patch over the hand so today's topic is different routes of drug administration how all a drug can be administered in the body routes of drug administration today in our class we will be studying the various routes of drug administration the different dosage forms and route of administration to the potential rapid rapidity of administration absorption bar therapeutic activity and you will i'll make you understand the advantage and disadvantages of various route of drug administration before going into the topic we will just classify the different routes of drug administration it is divided into systemic and local systemic can be further divided into enteral and parenteral enteral includes oral sublingual and rectal parenteral includes injections inhalations and transdermal sometimes transdermal are placed with the local uh, local uh, routes of administration and sometimes with parenteral administration you can usually write it under local administration the this is about systemic now coming to the local administration skin that is topical administration intranasal ocular drops mucosal and finally inhalation and transdermal okay enteral route enteral route means anything or any drugs taken through the mouth which involves the git that can be further be divided into oral sublingual and rectal by definition enteral administration involves the esophagus stomach large and the small intestine that is the gastrointestinal tract as a whole okay methods of administration will include oral lingual and rectal this is what i explained before three three different types under enteral administration includes oral sublingual sublingual and the rectal so enteral route of administration means administration of drug which involves the gi tract that is gastrointestinal tract that, uh, including the esophagus stomach small and large intestine it is divided into three that is oral sublingual and rectal first pass effect this is a term you should know before we enter into the topic proper uh, first pass effect any drug that is taken through the mouth or orally goes into the stomach from there few only few of the drug is absorbed by the circulation and enters the liver there metabolism of drug takes place and from that only little part gets absorbed into the circulation the part along with the metabolism that takes place in the a uh, liver is known as first pass effect or first pass metabolism so any drug that is taken orally undergoes first pass metabolism in the liver and only some part of the drug will reach finally into the circulation and the amount of drug that reaches in the circulation is known as bioavailability the so the second term you should understand is bioavailability first pass metabolism or effect easy metabolism that takes place in the liver by after oral administration and the amount of drug that reaches the systemic circulation after uh, oral absorption is known as bioavailability okay coming to the first oral route of administration oral route by definition two methods of administration either 
putting the tablet into the mouth or swallowing the tablet through the mouth which involves the gastrointestinal tract or the second one includes placing the drug inside the mouth under the tongue. Usually for oral absorption we usually abbreviate it as PO or otherwise known as per oral. PO is the abbreviation used to indicate oral route of administration of medication. Okay. Now, what are the different forms of oral administration? How all can you have a uh, drug orally? We can have tablets in the form of tablets, drugs in the form of tablets. What are the usual tablets we usually take? For fever, we usually take paracetamol. Then we can have capsules. Capsules or uh, have you seen capsules? Those um, vitamin tablets in a slimy, soft slimy structure. Have you seen that? Okay. Then we can have syrups like cough syrups and also drugs in the form of powder, granules or oils. Powder means those ORS when we have diarrhea. We usually prescribe ORS, oral rehydration solution in the form of powder which is being mixed in water and later. Now oral administration, the advantage. Advantage of oral administration, it is very safe, convenient for the patient to have economical it can be self-administered and a painless route of administration advantage of oral administration means convenient for the patient to have themselves painless and economical disadvantages slow absorption slow action irritable and unpalatable drugs cannot be taken uncooperative and unconscious patients cannot we cannot give to those patients because they won't swallow these drugs some drugs are destroyed and it undergoes first pass effect. That is, if you give 100 mg of drug, some metabolism takes place in the liver, only 50% reaches the subsystemic circulation. The bioavailability is very, very less in oral absorption. So, I hope you understood with what is the advantage and disadvantages of oral now coming to the second group of oral absorption that is sublingual route. As you see in the picture, the drug is placed under the trunk, tongue where Absorption takes place very fast and the effect for produced will also be immediately. Okay, buccal or sublingual road here. What we usually or what uh, what the patient usually do is place the tongue, place the drug under the tongue where there is increased vascularity. Uh, the drugs gets absorbed very fast through the uh, vascular circulation and reaches the systemic circulation. Uh, second uh, type. Uh, under sublingual is buccal road. Some places, some place a drug inside the buccal region. Here also the same mechanism, vascularity, good vascularity, they are better absorbed. So faster onset of action with this road. If you look into the advantage, quicker termina termination, there is no first pass metabolism and drug absorption is very quick. Here first pass metabolism is not there. They are here it reaches the systemic circulation directly without um, going into the uh, liver. First pass metabolism or first pass effect is avoided in case of sublingual root. This is the main advantage with sublingual root when you compare it with the oral root. Disadvantages unpalatable or bitter drugs cannot be taken. Irritation of the oral mucosa. Some drugs might irritate the oral mucosa when placed under the tongue. Large quantity of drugs cannot be given and only few drugs are absorbed through this route. Only very few drugs you will be knowing which can be placed under the tongue. Can you think of some drugs which are placed under the tongue? You usually, can you, anybody think of any drug like that? The, the classical example for such drug is glycerol trinitride, usually given for angina or chest pain. Suppose when a patient has chest pain, we need a faster immediate action drug. If you give orally, it will take time, it will undergo first pass metabolism. But if you place a drug under sublingual route, the and the drug gets immediately absorbed and the pain will be relieved. Glycerol trinitride is a vasodilator releasing out the brain pain. Pain in angina pectoris. The third, third type that is the rectal route. Have you ever seen kids having rectal administration of paracetamol? Yes, when they have fever, high grade of fever, we usually 
replace a drug in their rectum. Those forms of drugs are called suppositories. Suppositories in the rectum. Here also the rectum is having a large vascularity. So the drug is absorbed very fast and the action is also very very fast. Rectal administration. Those drugs which are administered rectally are called as suppositories. In this form, the drug is mixed with a waxy substance that dissolves or liquefies after it is inserted into the rectum. Examples for drugs are usually paracetamol, then diazepam and indomethacin. Now, if you if you ask me, okay, you have you ever seen a drug with, with such? Uh, so have you ever seen suppositories? If not, please buy one and see. It is usually bullet shaped with a slimy nature so that they can be easily inserted into the rectum. Coming to the advantages, used in children because irritable children won't swallow tablets, won't help, won't give time for injection because of the pain they think of. So this is a painless procedure in children. So advantage, it can be used in children. No first pass effect used in vomiting and unconscious patients and also higher concentration rapidly achieved that is action is very very fast now disadvantage is in some patient it will be inconvenient uh, absorption is not slow but uh, in very very odd cases the absorption will be very slow it can cause irritation and inflammation of the rectal mucosa now before going to the next topics three things you should remember Two drugs that can be given orally, just think and say me. Two drugs given orally. Orally in the Varimbatigan, Namal Vavari Kadikin, either drug in it is known as orally. Two drugs that can be usually given, think in your day to day practice. Practice means day to day life. Like if you have fever, what you have orally? Paracetamol. If it goes to upper respiratory drug infection, you will have an antibiotic. So the answer for two drugs given orally is one paracetamol, second one, an antibiotic. Now, two drugs that can be given sublingually. I have given the example for sublingual tablet. One drug that is glyceryl trinitride. Second drug, you should read the textbook, find out the answer and message me in the comment box. Two drugs that can be given rectally. I told you, usually in children, paracetamol is being given. Then diazepam, that is usually given for epilepsy or seizures. Okay, next group, parental route of administration, that is in the next group in the, um, which comes under systemic, uh, systemic administration. Here, the drug enters into the systemic circulation or into the blood vessels directly. There are many types, usually parental route of administration are through injections. Now, if you ask by definition, what is parental route of administration? Any administration of drug into the body other than the oral route without involvement of GIT. Told you by definition, parental route means route a route of administration other than enteral are called parental route. Here, the drugs are administered intravenously, where they directly reach the systemic circulation by deposit by depositing the drug into the circulation. It is divided into intravenous routes, intramuscular routes, subcutaneous, intraarterial, intraarticular, intrathecal, and intradermal. Four important routes you should remember is intravenous, intramuscular, subcutaneous, and intradermal routes. Now coming to injections or parenteral. Okay, parenteral drug administration. The most common form of parenteral drug administration in our clinics or in our hospital is nothing but intravenous route of administration where the drug is directly deposited inside the venous system. Now, other routes include, as I mentioned earlier, intramuscular, subcutaneous, intradermal, and finally epidural. Epidural is nothing but through, mm, where the anesthetic drugs are usually given. Now, you have a, um, a task for today that is apart from these four, intramuscular, intramuscular, intravenous, subcutaneous and intradermal. I mentioned few others in the classification. Intraarterial, intraarticular. Okay. Find out examples for all these and please message me in the comment box. I need your response so that I know you are reading out something and finding out. Okay. Then usually we know we see we give uh, uh, IV fluids for these patients. They are nothing but large volume parenterals. They also come under parental route of administration. But large volume parent small volume parenterals are nothing but our injection forms that is antibiotic injections or any antacid injections which are given in small forms okay parenteral route of administration intradermal where the tip of the needle lies into the skin 
subcutaneous where the absorption of drug lies uh, where the tip of the needle lies in the subcutaneous tissue intramuscular where the tip of the needle directly into the skeletal muscle and intravascular where they are need where the needle enters the vessel in the hand or the respective place directly into the vein intravenous route as you see in the picture the tip of the needle enters the vein direct entry of the medi medicines into the vein or this reaches finally the systemic circulation no first pass metabolism here the bioavailability will be 100% that if you give 100 gram 100 gram just the systemic circulation drugs directly deposited into this is blood stream no first pass metabolism and rapid action this is the advantage of intravenous route now advantages most common parenteral route of administration is intravenous for drugs that are not absorbed orally now this avoids first pass metabolism by liver intravenous delivery permits rapid effect and action is also rapid you can give large quantities of drug 100% bioavailability as i mentioned earlier summarizing the advantages it can be used in emergency emergency uh, emergency situations and also it can be used in uncooperative and unconscious patients apart from the uh, no first pass metabolism and rapid action these are the other advantages of of intravenous administration now the disadvantage what do you think the disadvantage will be any guess that is if a wrong drug medicine is being injected we cannot withdraw back the drug this will lead to either poisoning or toxicity so the first line unlike drugs in the gi tract those drugs that are injected cannot be recalled by strategies such as mss or by binding to activated charcoal because they are enter the systemic circulation directly then iv injections may also induce hemolysis or can cause adverse reactions by too rapid delivery of high concentration sudden increase sudden uh, you know, out inflow of drugs can cause some allergic reactions and thrombophlebitis of vein and necrosis of the adjoining tissue can occur with extravasation of drugs summarizing the other disadvantages preparation has to be sterilized sterile everything should be clean before we give an iv solution it is a bit costly when compared to the oral administration invasive it pierces your hand and cannot be self administered a person cannot himself have an iv uh, iv injection so the advantage and the disadvantage i hope you have you are clear with what is the advantage of iv and disadvantage of iv advantage you should remember direct injection into the systemic circulation no first pass me metabolism or effect 100% bioavailability and rapid onset of action advantage it is nothing but once a wrong drug is injected we cannot withdraw the drug they gets into the systemic circulation then preparation should be sterilized costly and invasive so one cannot self administer the second one intramuscular as we all know when we get fever we get a paracetamol injection in the buttocks that is nothing but intramuscular injection here the needle is directly placed perpendicular to the muscle coming to the advantage and disadvantage uh, advantage more reliable highly vascular so increase in absorption and no first pass metabolism irritants and depot preparation su suspensions and colloids all can be injected su in such manners no irritant solutions can also be injected now disadvantage includes injection can be painful nerve can be uh, be nerve can be liable to injury or irritation and local infection of surrounding area with necrosis now these are the various sites for intramuscular injections as we all know usual site is a third picture that is the hip then we give tt injections in the arm that is the second picture okay other sites in use thighs and buttocks okay usual is in the buttocks region not the hip okay i told um, what i told first was wrong usually it is the buttocks that is usually been uh, given um, we prescribe for uh, intramuscular injection then comes the arm thigh and hip third one subcutaneous injection where the needle is angled to 45 degrees the needle enters the subcutaneous tissue which is just below the skin 
administers medication below the skin into the subcutaneous fat. It is just outside. Usual sites include outside the upper arm, top of the thigh, lower portion of each side of the abdomen and not into grossly adipose tissues. Now, often have, some has a longer duration of action and mm, onset of action compared with IM or IV injection. When you compare with intramuscular intravenous, the action takes a bit longer time when compared to IM or IV injections. The classical example for such subcutaneous injections is nothing but insulin. Have you ever seen your grandparents or parents having insulin by injecting a small pen-like needle into the thigh? It is nothing but the tip of the needle just enters the subcutaneous tissue. If you give a keen look at the needle, it is very very small and the needle is just uh, made, made in such a way that it just enters the subcutaneous tissue so that the drug are deposited in the subcutaneous tissue. So the classical example for subcutaneous tissue is nothing but insulin. Now, advantage. Unlike the uh, IV, here self-administration is possible. Deeper penetration is not required. While in IM injections, you require and deep administration. This advantage is that is written drugs cannot be injected. Only a smaller volume can be injected and cannot be given patients with shock. Such three conditions, it should be avoided. Other special forms of subcutaneous Injection. See, subcutaneous means placing the drug in the subcutaneous tissue. It can be done either through injections or by placing it in the form of pellets. So, special forms come under um, uh, special forms that come under subcutaneous include first one dermojet. Here, it is a needle type. Here, uh, a needle kind machine machine or gun is used where the drug, with the help of this gun, the drug is injected into the subcutaneous tissue. So, dermojet is an instrument which includes. Uh, which uh, you um, dermojet is an instrument which injects the drug into the um, subcutaneous tissue in this method the needle is not used a high jet velocity of the drug is projected from a microfine orifice using a gun like implement the drug will pass through a superficial layer of the skin and get deposited in the subcutaneous tissue painless and used in mass inoculation After dermoject, it is the pellet implantation. Here, the drugs and drugs in the, uh, are placed in solid pellets which are introduced with the help of trocar and cannula. As you can see the picture in the right side, it is the trocar and cannula where the white are the drug. They are placed under the subcutaneous tissue. Here, and there is sustained release of drug from the subcutaneous tissue. It, it is usually used for uh, hormone tablets like testosterone and DOCA. So once you introduce this drug into the subcutaneous tissue, uh, the drugs will be released every day in certain amount and uh, it can be used for at least one or uh, one weeks. Or this is a picture how to show how a pellet is being implanted into the subcutaneous tissue. Drugs are solid pellet are implanted under the tissue, uh, under the skin to provide uniform systemic effect. A classical example as I told you, testosterone. Now, elastic or non-biodegradable and biodegradable implants. While in the pellets, you should remove the pellets after the time. That is, after if it is for one month, you should remove the pellet. But in elastic uh, implants, uh, uh, biodegradable, no need to remove. But uh, uh, non-biodegradable, you should remove the uh, pellets or tubes which are placed under the uh, subcutaneous tissue. So here crystalline drugs are packed in tubes or capsules made of suitable materials and implanted under drugs under the skin. Slow and uniform release of the drug takes place, similarly like the pellet, for weeks or months for a, uh, providing a constant blood level. This is also usually for hormone and contraceptives. See these are the tubes, pellet like tubes, okay. Both pellets and tubes are the same but still three different terms are being used. Coming to intradermal injection, just below the skin, above the subcutaneous tissue. Drugs are injected into the skin, rising, uh, rising a blub. If you inject intradermally, you will have a blub on the skin. Here, the angle will be just 15 degrees with the skin. Example for intradermal injection includes BCG and skin sensitizing test. Now, intradermal injections, only a small amount are injected into the layers of skin, often used for testing allergic reactions and antibody formations. Usual site, anterior forearm, and insertion, angle of insertion is 15 degrees with the skin. Okay, this picture summarizes the parental administration of drugs.
four different types intramuscular intravenous subcutaneous and intradermal now usually intramuscular injection as i told you it should be perpendicular to the surface here in this picture it is a bit slanting now intramuscular injection perpendicular injection where it pierces or penetrates into deeper tissue that is our muscle intravenous slanting slanting to the skin surface it enters the, the needle tip enters the vein present in the skin then comes the subcutaneous which enters the subcutaneous tissue and finally our intradermal where after an injection there is a blood formation in the skin just below the skin at an angle of 15 degrees i hope you got with the class for today this is the first part of drug um, this is the first part of uh, roots of a drug administration the next day i will be uploading the next second part today you should read the corresponding topic what i taught from your textbook understand it deeper then understand uh, if you have any doubt in whatever i taught you you can be free to ask us we are here to help you in all the ways if there is any mistake i have made you should you are read, you are free to correct it out also so so after hearing this presentation please go read your textbook i hope you follow tribadi most of you will be following tara we pre we prefer your people read tribadi Okay, thank you all for your attention. I hope this class was useful for you. Something you got into your mind. If you go read your textbook, uh, correlate with what I've taught you, it will make you helpful. Please go read. Your task for today is different types of administration, whether oral or parenteral. Go find more examples of drugs which are given orally, parenterally, parenterally which includes intravenous, intramuscular, subcutaneous R and intradermal. Then, uh, examples for drugs which are given orally, sublingually, rectally, etc. Okay? Thank you. Thank you once again.